Project Syndicate um, specializes in uh, trying to make complex ideas uh, available to the general public. Project Syndicate. Project Syndicate. Project Syndicate. Project Syndicate. Project Syndicate. Project Syndicate. The Project Syndicate. I want to thank, first of all, Project Syndicate for bringing us together in this remarkable gathering. I think it's a unique occasion. I don't think the world's editors get together for such substantive occasions as this, and I think it's an ingenious thing to bring us together. This story of how Project Indicate has managed to expand by cooperation and, and goodwill. We, we very much consider ourselves uh, an organization of newspapers sort of within the uh, broadly conceived democratic mainstream. We don't have a political uh, axe to grind. We don't take uh, positions on particular issues. We're not left, we're not right. As an author of uh, Project Syndicate, I know a lot of publishers and editors are here. I want to thank you um, for your uh, work and your contribution. I do think it's important that individual citizens take steps to change their lifestyle in order to live in a sustainable way. I guess I'm, I'm charged up because I thought it was a really exciting session in which there was a lot of information, there's tremendous expertise on that panel. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a huge audience out there that has the ability to reach hundreds of millions of people. I'm delighted to be able to join you for this crucial conference. Your presence here powerfully underlines your commitment to combating climate change. Copenhagen is not the end but the necessary beginning of the changes we need to see. And now we are all engaged in a road to Copenhagen. I believe that the first and essential prerequisite for an international agreement is accountability via domestic laws. It's such a huge question that uh, it will take a very long time to answer how do you really calculate the cost of energy. Of course everything is interconnected with everything else. But we are living in the real world, in the world of real politic. We should not repeat the mistake of the Doha round. The way these negotiations are done, they don't seem to me to be problem-solving negotiations. They seem to me to be formalistic and legal negotiations. What really counts is whether our governments are able to build clean power plants, whether we're able to uh, change behavior, whether all that new technology is able to be Develop. The media has a vital role to play. Every day you reflect the priorities of your readers, listeners and viewers. In doing so, you shape the environment in which our leaders operate. And your influence on our leaders and on the public has never been more important than in the next few weeks. Today, there is a trust barrier and that trust barrier has to be bridged. And you can only bridge it by putting your money where your mouth is. Copenhagen is fundamentally about uh, dividing a pie of uh, emission quotas. And that is a disaster. To really make these changes, we need a new kind of automobile. We need new kinds of power plants. We need new kinds of buildings. That's huge social organization, huge. The fact that the uh, markets couldn't get the price of something as simple as housing right in the United States uh, is, is should remind us of a certain humility as we uh, address a problem of the complexity that we have. But sometimes politics is also about serious matters, matters that are existential that can determine the future of our life, life of future generations and of our planet. Green growth is not a pipe dream, it's the reality. We can do it and in concrete terms we are doing it. Now in Europe there is no plan B as we have no planet B. 
this is not an environmental issue, but an existential issue. We need to talk about living lifestyles that are less damaging. It's not enough, I believe, simply to make individual appeals. It is important that we have governments that uh, take stands and that uh, set and demand targets, particularly of the industrialized nations. The science is beyond dispute, and the facts are clear. Time is fast running out, and there's no excuse for inaction. We can change the world for good.